Good morning, and welcome to Harmony Grove United Methodist Church. So glad to see you folks who are here in the pews. Delighted for those who are joining us online and for those who will be viewing us throughout the week uh, on YouTube. Uh, this is the 24th Sunday after Pentecost, and it's also All Saints Day. And so today we will have a, a, a special service kind of focused on uh, those who have died this past year uh, here at uh, Harmony Grove. So you'll hear that in the liturgy and throughout today's service. A couple quick announcements. Today is Charge Conference Day, and that will be at 5 p.m. It'll be by way of Zoom. I sent out the link to those who are on the church council. If anyone else wants that link, let me know. As I said, uh, it's not required nor mandatory, but it would be appreciated if some of y'all joined me. Uh, I'm not sure how, the, how that meeting will go, but it'll be a bunch of churches, and we're only in it for an hour, so we'll see what they do. Uh, also, too, I want to say thanks to any of those of you who showed up yesterday for our work day. Uh, we had some fun, got some work done, did some gardening, and uh, uh, also, too, be mindful that we now have the Little Free Pantry. I need to get the Little Free Pantry. Uh, out back. If you haven't seen it yet, drive around back and look at it. It's really sharp. It looks great. And I'm really delighted to have that as part of our community and in a way in which we can care for those in our immediate community. Um, and so uh, take what you can, give what you can, as we say. So at this time, uh, if there be no further announcements, uh, would you please stand for our call to worship, which you'll find in the bulletin or on the screen. Come and worship the one who wants your all. We come to worship the one who offers all. Come and worship with all your heart and soul and mind and strength. We come and offer all that we have and all that we are in worship and in service. Come and be blessed and pour yourself out in worship. We will, we will worship, worship wholeheartedly. wholeheartedly and, and with joy. joy. Let us pray. Most gracious and heavenly Lord, we thank you so much that we can enter this house of worship, that we can join our hearts, our prayers, and lift them up to you uh, in joyful celebration and thanksgiving. Lord God, we thank you uh, for this day that we have set apart to remember those uh, who have gone on before us. We pray a blessing upon all who are here. Bless this service and our worship that we might worship you in spirit and in truth. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. And if you would stay standing and join us for our opening hymn, For All the Saints, number 711, and we will be singing verses 1, 4, and 6.
Hello, Harmony Grow friends. Today, I want to talk to you about finding clues. Have you ever asked yourself, how can we know God? Do you ever wonder what God is like? It all seems like a big mystery, doesn't it? Perhaps that's how it's meant to be. But the Bible tells us that we can know more about God by the stories that are written about Jesus. The Bible gives us an account of Jesus' life when he lived on earth. It tells us that God has spoken to us by his son, Jesus. So what do we know about Jesus? We know that he was a kind and loving man. We know that he healed people, and we read about his miracles. We know that he gave life to people who had died. We know that he prayed and had great power. Can you think of other things that describe Jesus? Those things that we find out about Jesus are clues to what God is like. Just as in all good mysteries, there are clues along the way. The more we study and learn about the life of Jesus, the closer we get to understanding God's nature. It's almost like unwrapping a special present or gift. We have to let God outside of the box. Today's scripture message tells us that Jesus came to earth with God's glory and power so that we might know and recognize God's love for us. Then Jesus returned to be with God so that we may be forgiven in and through him. This is the beauty and mystery of what we believe, our faith. Go forth today to share the joy which comes from such faith. And don't forget to keep an eye out for those clues. 
And that's the good news for today. Will you pray with me? Thank you, God, for the mystery of faith. May our eyes, ears, and hearts be open to your clues. In Christ we pray. Amen. We come to that time in our service now when we receive our gifts, our offerings, and our tithes. I know that many of you uh, have given your gifts in the receptacles that are out in the narthex. I know many of you continue to give online, which we strongly encourage. Also, too, know that while we are here, uh, we also have some offering plates up front that you can come and put your gifts in, or if by chance you just have a spare dollar or two or some spare change in your pocket, we'll take that, too. You know, that adds up over the year. And so please, at this time, uh, let us draw near to the Lord our God and bless these gifts. Let us pray. Most gracious Lord, we thank you that you are our creator, our sustainer, and our redeemer. We know that everything we have comes from you. You are the one who gives us good gifts, and you have blessed us richly. Lord God, we pray that you will bless these gifts, these tithes, these offerings for the building of your kingdom. We pray that you will bless those who gave, those who received, and grant us the wisdom and the knowledge to use these gifts well for the building of your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow.
Our lay Bible reading for today is taken from the book of Hebrews, chapter 11, verses 1 through 16. Hear these words. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Indeed, by faith our ancestors received approval. By faith we understand that the worlds were, set, were prepared by the word of God, so that what is seen was made from things that are not visible. By faith, Abel offered to God a more acceptable sacrifice than Cain's. Through this, he received approval as righteous, God himself giving approval to his gifts. He died, but through his faith, he still speaks. By faith, Enoch was taken so that he did not experience death, and he was not found because God had taken him. For it was attested before he was taken away that he had pleased God. And without faith, it is impossible to please God. For whoever would approach him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who seek him. By faith, Noah, warned by God about events as yet unseen, respected the warning and built an ark to save his household. By this, he condemned the world and became an heir to the righteousness that is in accordance with faith. By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to set out for a place that he was to receive as an inheritance. And he set out, not knowing where he was going. By faith, he stayed for a time in the land he had been promised, as in a foreign land, living in tents, as did Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked forward to the city that has foundations, whose architect and builder is God. By faith, he received power of procreation, even though he was too old. And Sarah herself was barren, because he considered him faithful who had promised. Therefore, from one person, and this one as good as dead, descendants were born, as many as the stars of heaven and as the innumerable grains of sand by the seashore. All of these died in faith without having received the promises, but from a distance they saw and greeted them. They confessed that they were strangers and foreigners on the earth, for the people who speak in this way make it clear that they are seeking a homeland. If they had been thinking of the land that they had left behind, they would have had an opportunity to return. But as it is, they desire a better country that is a heavenly one, Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God. Indeed, he has prepared a city for them. The word of God for the people of God. At this time, you may have noticed you have an insert in your bulletin. This is our Remembering the Saints here on All Saints Days. You will see the picture uh, and their names. Um, and we're going to invite you to, to, to join along in this uh, liturgy as we uh, read their names. Uh, we invite you also, as a name is read, if this person uh, was someone special to you, please feel free to stand up to honor them uh, as we uh, ring the bell and light a candle uh, in their memory. <clears throat> We pause to remember the saints, all those Christian people of every time and place who have died, especially this past year. We celebrate the communion of saints, both living and dead, in the Church Universal and in our local congregation. All the saints have shaped our faith and call into remembrance the hope of life eternal in Christ Jesus. Let us celebrate these persons and their lives in all aspects of God's creation. Let us name those who have died this past year. Flora Evans. Don Burris. Joe Dinkins. Beep. 
Galia Reigns. Evelyn Lashley. Rebecca O'Toole. Brett Reef. You may be seated. We also remember all those who have touched our lives and have gone on before us. Let us pray. Most gracious Lord, we give you great thanks for the lives of these, our saints, who lived among us, who taught us, who inspired us, whose life of faith is a part of our story now. We pray a blessing upon their families, their friends, that their grief may be an expression of their love and how deeply they love them. Be with us all as we continue to be mindful of all those whom we love who have died and who are in your presence, knowing that one day we all shall join them and be eternally at peace in you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And while today we honor all the saints, we have a special poem that was written by Jean Burris that honors those out of the Harmony class. Did you hear these words? this morning. The Harmony class has been together many years. We've been through a lot of joy and shed many tears. Our kids grew up together here. We have many memories, oh so dear. Time has gone by, the kids have gone their separate ways. Sadly our class is just about seeing its better days. Old age, illness and death have all taken their toll canes and walkers, hearing aids, and such help as to meet our daily goal. Our God is still with us all the way. Together we hope for many a better day. Today we remember the recent ones we've lost with love. We pray that they're looking down at us from above. Joanne Campbell was a great friend and a preacher's wife. She gave so much to Norton and to the church all of her life. Mary Brancato loved our class. She was 95 years old when God took her away. We all remember her well today. Glenda Bucky was a great friend and a teacher. As, as much time as she put into her lessons, she could have been a preacher. Sarah Holden was a beautiful lady in every way. She enjoyed our class and sang in the choir on Sunday. Don Burris was a member of the class from the start. He loved the class and he loved the church with all his heart. Joe Dinkins was a wonderful lady and another preacher's wife. She was such a beautiful Christian lady and a friend all her life. Gail Rains was, a, was another saint of God. She was one of the best. She taught our class many years. Now she is at rest. Peace be with you, our friends, today. We will be with you some great day. And may God add his blessing to these words this morning. Good morning. To stay with our theme of All Saints Day, for our prayer time this morning, I have put together a collection of different prayers used for All Saints Day from different denominations um, across our Christian tradition. Uh, some of them are when we're, use a little bit more fancy language, some are some poetic language, and then some are just straightforward. Um, I hope that one of them uh, speaks to you today. So let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, by whose gift we venerate in one celebration the merits of all the saints, bestow on us, we pray, through the prayers of so many intercessors, an abundance of the reconciliation with you for which we earnestly long. O God, Heavenly Father, we thank you today for calling us your saints. 
In spite of our unholy lives, you look at us and see Jesus' perfect life and death covering ours. Thank you for this grace, the grace we received when we were baptized. Thank you for every Christian who has helped us on our journey and encouraged us to keep believing when we felt like giving up. Thank you for all those who taught us the faith. Thank you for those who made the ultimate sacrifice of their lives to ensure others could hear of your love in Christ. We remember the saints in heaven. Thank you for releasing them from the burden of sin and death and for keeping your promise to them. We especially remember those from our community who have passed away in the past year. Give comfort to those who grieve over loved ones no longer with us on earth. Give them the hope only your word can offer us. Bless the many parted souls who lived their lives with grace. Bless the saints in heaven gathered in that special place. May we tell their stories and remember all their ways. They lived their faith and spent their days. There is glory and reward, even if at first there is strife. O oh, blessed saints, you help us see a path that's to eternal life. May we always hold them dear and know their life and place. May we know their inspiration and aspire to their grace. We give you thanks, O oh God, for all the saints who ever worshipped you, whether in brush arbors or cathedrals, weathered wooden churches or crumbling cement meeting houses. Where your name was lifted and adored, we give you thanks, O oh God, for hands that lifted in praise. Manicured hands and hands stained with grease or soil, strong hands and those gnarled with age, holy hands used as wave offerings across the land we thank you god for hard-working saints whether hard-hatted or steel-booted head-ragged or aproned blue-collared or three-piece suited they left their mark on the earth for you for us for our children to come thank you god for the tremendous sacrifices made by those who have gone before us. Bless the memories of your saints, God. May we learn how to walk wisely from their examples of faith, dedication, worship, and love. God, our Father, by our baptism, you made us your holy people and called us to share in the joy of your saints. By their help and example, you guide us to live for others as Jesus taught us. May their prayers strengthen and comfort us as we follow Jesus to his promise of everlasting life. We make this prayer to you in his name, praying together the prayer he taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. fall down we lay our crowns at the feet of Jesus the greatness of mercy and love at the feet of Jesus we cry holy holy 
cry, holy, holy, holy. We cry, holy, holy, holy is the Lamb. We fall down, we lay our crowns at the feet. Jesus, the greatness of your mercy and love at the feet of Jesus, we cry holy, 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 we cry holy. all the people said amen thank you beautiful beautiful also want to remind uh, those of you who may have had a loved one's name read today if you are here you're welcome to pick up their candle uh, after the service so please feel free to do that um, <clears throat> you just heard in our lay Bible reading uh, chapter 11 in the book of Hebrews this is often called the chapter of faith it relates the kind of stories of our ancestors who have died before, the ancient stories of our ancestors of faith um, and their mighty acts. Uh, by name and by story, we remember the lives of those who died in the faith. And by remembering their names and stories, who they are, the meaning of their lives, their lives continue on forever. It is through being remembered that who we are lives on. In Hebrews 12, 1 through 2, the essence of this hall of fame, as the band, the script, might sing about, it is summarized in the following lines, which are our scripture reading for today. So please hear these words from our scripture reading, which is today taken from the 12th chapter of Hebrews, verses 1 through 2. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and the sin that clings so closely, and let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, who, for the sake of the joy that was set before him, endured the cross, disregarding the shame, and has taken his seat at the right hand of the throne of God. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> Perhaps one of the most poignant scenes in cinema history, at least to me and to many critics, is found in the final scene uh, in Blade Runner, uh, when the replicant, Roy Batty, who is played by Rutger Hauer, dies. 
He is on the roof of a building set in a, set in a kind of dystopian future. It's pouring down rain. He has just rescued Harrison Ford from uh, falling from his death and has thrown him into a corner, and he sits down in front of him cross-legged while holding a dove. And in these lines, he uh, has a most poignant uh, word to say to us. But a replicant, or an android, just so you don't know the story, is an artificial intelligence. It's designed to work off-world in the future because there are places where it's hard for humans to work. And in order to control them, because these are entities of power uh, and resourcefulness, they are only given a lifespan of four years. So in this final scene, Rutger Hauer, while sitting in the pouring rain, delivers the following lines as the character, uh, Rick Deckard, played by Harrison Ford, looks on. He says, I've seen things you people wouldn't believe. Attack ships on fire off the shoulder of Orion. I watched sea beams glitter in the dark near the Tannhauser Gate. All those moments will be lost in time, like tears in rain. Time to die. All his memories, all that he was while living, his whole sense of meaning, will be lost in time, washed away like tears in the rain. For you see, Roy Betty had no one who would remember him after he died. Without anyone to remember him, he would be lost in time, as if he never lived. It is through being remembered that who we are lives on. There's an animated children's movie that came out in 2016 called Coco. If you haven't seen it, I highly recommend it. If you have some grandchildren coming for the holidays, get a copy of this movie and watch it. It's delightful. It really is. It's a beautiful setting. It's a beautiful story. Uh, and one of the things I really like about it, it's, it's based on the Mexican holiday, the Day of the Dead. Uh, and one of the motifs around which they build the storyline is an old Mexican tradition called the Three Deaths. In America, we like to say three strikes and you're out, but in Mexico, they talk about three deaths and you're out. In Mexico, they speak of these three deaths. The first death is when your body ceases to function, your natural death, when our hearts no longer beat and our lungs no longer breathe in air and our spirit leaves our body for good. That's the first death. The second death is when we are lowered in the ground or our body is cremated. Then there is the third and final death, which is the most definitive one. The third death occurs when there is no one alive who remembers your name. That's when you're finally, finally dead and gone, when there's no living person who remembers your name. Think back in your own genealogy how many names back can you go before you forget the names of those ancestors? Not too many, probably. And with no one remembering their name, they are finally and definitively dead. It is through being remembered that who we are lives on. In ancient Greece, as we read about in the Homeric tales and elsewhere, the path, or at least one of the paths to immortality, was through being remembered in song. A Greek hero became a hero through doing some sort of mighty act, like Achilles killing Hector, or Odysseus adventurous 10-year journey home. But it's only when that mighty act was remembered through song, which was then passed down through the ages, that the hero became immortal. It is through being remembered that who we are lives on. Our Bible is filled with the stories of faithful people who are long dead, but the meaning of their lives continues through our reading and cherishing of their stories. Their story and their faith continue to shape our lives. Being remembered is how we humans find a meaning that transcends the limitations of this one short earthly life. 
if you are not remembered after you die by name or by stories, because you've never formed a part of a family or a larger community, then the meaning of your life, whether great or insignificant, dies with you. This is why we remember the honored dead from within our church community on All Saints Day. By doing this, the meaning of their lives becomes part of our continued story. They are not lost in time like tears in the rain. They become part of our continued story. And because of that, the meaning of their life transcends their lifetime. It is through us remembering them that who they are lives on. In my work as a chaplain, which I did for 30-odd years in acute health care settings, at hospitals, and in hospice, I have performed funerals for many people who had no family, who never connected with a community of people, who had no one to speak or remember their story, and who died alone and forgotten. The meaning of their lives, regardless of the great things they may or may not have done, died with them. And it is enough to break your heart. But this will not happen to us. And why is that? Because we are members of this church, Harmony Grove United Methodist Church. And as members of this church, we form a community, a community that recorded our names when we joined the church, a community that lists our name on the roster of a Sunday school class or the Joy Club or some other thing. It's a community that places our name on our prayer list when we are sick or hurting or when we die. And it's a community that will remember our name when we die. They will remember our stories when we die. As the body of Christ, we too shall live with Christ forever, and our meaning shall also transcend history. What story will this church tell of you when you are dead and gone? Will it just be your name, as in the Mexican tradition? Will it also include your mighty acts, as in the Greek tradition? Or will it also include the story of your faith, as in the biblical tradition, a story that can still teach and inspire us? The difference will be in how much you decide to give to the church of yourself, of your prayers, of your presence, of your gifts, of your service, and of your witness. Among those of our honored dead whose names we read today, those who we remember best or remember most, and whose story of faith still teaches and inspires us, are those who gave themselves heart and soul to this church. You know who they are. You know their stories. You know the impact they had on your lives and on this church, and you remember them. They live on because you remember them. We as a community have the responsibility to remember our honored dead. We are part of this story, and it's one story, the story of God at work in this world through this local church. And we must honor those saints who have gone on before. They gave themselves to this church, to this community, to you and to me. This is the great cloud of witnesses that surrounds us. You too will one day join this cloud. What will your witness be? Amen. Now at this time, we're going to join together in Holy Communion. The uh, liturgy service is found in your hymnal on page 12, or I believe it will be on the screen as well. And at this time, we are going to have Jim come forward and tell you how to get into those little packets you have. Just a reminder, we do this every, every month, but two-part process. We will take the pink cellophane and peel it back, and that will reveal to you the wafer. You'll then bend the tab, which will open up the juice portion of this. 
Mark will give you the time and the, the time that you will partake of the elements. And when you're finished, if you will take your cup and put it in the trash cans at the back, we would appreciate that. Please join me in the invitation and our confession and pardon. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love for us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. And now for the great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, God of Abraham and Sarah, God of Miriam and Moses, God of Joshua and Deborah, God of Ruth and David, God of priests and prophets, God of Mary and Joseph, God of the apostles and martyrs, God of our mothers and our fathers, God of our children to all generations, God of Flora Evans, God of Don Burris, God of Joe Dinkins, God of Galia Rains, God of Evelyn Lashley, God of Rebecca O'Toole, God of Brett Riff. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world, the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. Renew our communion with all your saints, especially those whom we name in our hearts before you. Since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, strengthen us to run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, by your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet through your son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your holy church, 
All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Because there is one loaf, we who are many are formed into one body. Let us now partake of the bread. The body of Christ, broken for you. Amen. And in this cup, we recognize the continuing presence and promise of Christ for us and the world. The blood of Christ spilt for you. Amen. Let us stand and sing together hymn 545. We will be singing verses 1, 3, and 5. The church is one foundation, is Jesus Christ alone. She is his new creation by water and the word. From heaven he came and sought her to be his holy bride. With his own blood he bought her and for her life she With a scornful wonder, we see her sorrow pressed by schisms rent asunder, by heresies distressed. Yet, saints, their watch are keeping their cry goes up how long and soon the night of weeping shall be the morn of song yet she on earth hath union with God the three in one and mystic sweet communion with those whose rest is one. O oh, happy ones and holy, Lord, give us grace that we, like them, be and lowly, on high may dwell with thee. Please remain standing and receive this benediction. May God bless our dearly departed. May they live in heaven, free from pain and all sorrow, at the side of Jesus Christ, knowing that one day we too shall join them. Know that they lived a life of faithful service because they know that God loved them just as they are. Go forth and share that love one with another. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen.